What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Player of the Week selection review slash breakdown. Now, lads, I'm not going to beat around the bush anymore, man. I've been very vocal over the last couple of weeks about these Players of the Week, right? I just feel like they're completely lost. I'm pretty much... Everyone that's been playing the game for longer than three months now, right? Especially if you do spin. Now, I know that everybody doesn't spin with coins, and I know that everybody likes to stay free to play every now and again. But even with the free spin that you get once a week, if you started playing the game two months ago, you're going to have eight free spins uh, from playing the game. From doing the events, you'll probably have another eight or, eight or ten free spins strictly from just doing the coins, or else saving up and buying an actual beastly pack. And that's even without talking about the GP market, which is very easy to grind and get really solid players that can get you from Division you know, 10 all the way up to Division 2 to Division 1, depending on how good you are, right? So the reason why I'm kind of a bit down on these Player of the Weeks is something that I think they're going to address with Salah, right? So this is a sign of where the things are going to go, in my opinion. Um, I do feel like Rodri is a very good player. I would have liked to have seen him with Booster as well. Obviously, he's going to be getting a plus two with the manager boost. He's got a wavering form. He's on A rating. He's a fantastic anchorman because he doesn't have high attack and awareness or acceleration. So he's going to just stay back. Now, his balance and lack of speed are a bit of an issue uh, for where the meta is at the moment. If you guys missed my speed versus acceleration, it's a complete deep dive on speed and acceleration. So make sure you guys check that out. It is a really good video if you are struggling with the kind of meta at the moment and getting, you know, um, getting a lot of goals conceded or not being able to score, right? So he's he's got a good card, okay? He's probably one of the picks of them. You also have Hernandez can play CB or left back. I always like Hernandez when he can play CB, lads, because he's so fast, he's so physical, and he's so strong. He is very, very nice. Um, now, his aggression and defensive awareness are a little bit of a concern, but it is going to be 85 and 82. His defensive engagement won't go past the 80 mark, though, even with the manager boost, but his speed is going to be 96, and his acceleration and physical contact are going to be very, very nice with 90 stamina. I think a defensive left back is where this guy needs to go, to be honest with you, especially with the fact that he does have pinpoint crossing, but he also has interception and blocker and fighting spirit. So this is a very unique card that they haven't really released a good, as good a card as this Hernandez in a long time for a left back. And usually when they release, I found they release kind of like legends such as Bergomi or Maldini. They'd all always release somebody that's kind of like a chance at getting. So like the likes of Rodri and Hernandez are kind of those defensive players that can shore up your back line, right? We also have a couple of these kind of like guys that, listen, apart from pace, you're not going to really be playing them too much. Um, obviously, this guy has got, you know, ball roll. Uh, Edwards, he's a fairly stylish player. Double touch, flip, flap and soul control. He also has first time shot. He doesn't have one touch pass though, which is a bit of a concern. But the dribbling, the ball control, the tight possession, it's pretty decent. And again, we kind of go back to the point that we're always saying that tight possession and balance, unless that's going into the 90 zone for an attacking base player, you are kind of at a little bit of a disadvantage against the superstar squads, in my opinion. We also have another centre back here who's down as a destroyer. Excellent defensive skills. His three defensive skills are all going to go into the 90s or above. And of course, he does have blocker area superiority, man marking. He doesn't have acrobatic clearance and he doesn't have interception. Very strange he doesn't have interception because interception is actually tied to player ID and to stats. I see a lot of people in that speed versus acceleration video um, not really grasping the fact that Konami have changed a lot from what they define in the game as what blocker does, what speed does, what acceleration does. So we'll get into that in the live stream as well if we have not already finished the live stream, okay? Physically, he's very strong, very physical. We also have Martin here as well as a CMF whole player, just your traditional... Um, Whole player. Now, this guy actually has a plus three technique. So it's interesting that he gets it and Rodri doesn't. Obviously, um, they're probably trying to mix it around a little bit as well. But this guy actually gets a plus three technique when he's on A rating. So we will check this out with Salah as well. But essentially, when these players are on A rating, as he is this week, as you see here, he doesn't have a face, but he is on A rating with his card. He's going to get a plus, a max plus three. Maximum effects will be activated when the player has an A rating. Um, if he has this here, right? So you're going to be getting a plus three with this because he's on an A rating. Now, that kind of changes things around a little bit because he's also going to be getting a plus two with the manager boost. So his ball control, dribbling, tight possession, low pass are pretty much going to be stacked. His acceleration isn't too bad as a whole playing attacking midfielder. And I do like this card, especially with the fact that he has got the booster. It's kind of a unique one. But then you take a look at his player skills and it's just a big, 
you know, dumped there. I just don't see the reason for the player not having one touch pass, especially if he's a whole player. He, he definitely should have it. We also have our goalkeeper, Savage. I'm not going to even waste too much time on him. He's got the skills. He does have long throw and low punt, but he's inconsistent and he doesn't have booster. He doesn't have anything like that. Um, and all of his defensive stats or his goalkeeper stats, they don't go to 90. Okay. Now we have Cunha here as well from Wolves having a great season, of course, as well. Speed is good. Balance is poor. For an SS, you need that balance a little bit higher, even though he's got some nice player skills. I do like this card. I use him on my road to glory. He's average. He's an okay card, and this card is no nothing spectacular. Um, we have Under as well. This guy is very, very nice. I know a lot of people have been trying to spin for him, and you are going to get that boost again with the plus three. Now, he gets a plus three to shooting, so ball control, finishing, kicking power, and physical contact. I definitely see a future, lads, where we will be able to get boosters. Somehow, some way, there will be a way for us to get boosters and turn our favorite players into absolute demons. Like, I mean, for me, I would like to get somebody like Evan Ferguson from Brighton. Obviously, he's an Irish center forward as well. I'd like to get him and be able to pump in a plus five booster to him, to his finishing and everything, to actually make him, you know, be able to compete with the best strikers in the game. Just out of pure wanting to play with a, with a player or for collar or somebody like that, that I could put, you know, plus five acceleration on collar. I'm not talking about creating Frankenstein type players, but I definitely think to mix it up, the boosters would be a nice one if you could use them. And maybe they don't last forever. They last for like five games or whatever if you were chasing Division 1. But then, of course, you are bringing in a couple of arcade features, which a lot of people might like. But this guy's booster is pretty decent. He's a very solid card. Um, he doesn't have one-touch pass. Again, they always try and balance these cards uh, these cards a little bit too much but the rest of his stats are quite decent and especially his speed acceleration as a right midfielder he'll be able to tear it up on the right for you he'll still have 80 finishing his passing is still more than good enough and his dribbling is more than good enough the balance is a bit of an issue with him right the abbey you know what you're getting with the abbey just pure speed and this is one of the worst cards they've released at the abbey his tight possession again we continue to say it acceleration dribbling ball control and balance all in the 90s with speed but the tight possession is the limiter and that's what these are these these cards are doing now he does have soul control and double touch you can't give him any other skills so you can't get ball roll on him unfortunately the flip flap and then last but not least we have booster salad so this is obviously the pick of him right especially with the booster you're going to get a plus three to his passing and you are going to be getting his low pass curl and kick and power all fairly high but they don't really change the metrics of this card too highly lads um i think this is kind of a disappointing card especially he's down as a creative playmaker but he can only play as a right winger which again goes to show you that they need to kind of switch up the play styles and the definitions as to what they actually do because there is a lot of conflicting information out there. Even when you try to explain it, like I did in that last speed versus acceleration, um, if you don't have a basic understanding of the mechanics of the game, it can be easily, you know, confusing. So low pass is not going to change the dial too much for him. This is a shoot first right winger. It doesn't compare, like nothing compares to the blitz carler. As the blitz carler style is one of the best cards in the game. And this is coming from me, who doesn't like playing with Salah too much, but he has definitely changed my mind. He's just a demon on the right flank. This is an okay card, especially if you're getting the plus three, which becomes a plus five to those stats. But his speed is going to be 90, his acceleration 94. The balance is fairly okay, but his tight possession is not where it needs to be. And it's a pity he didn't get a booster on that. So that is it for me, lads, with the player of the week. We have Fratesi here as well. I have this card um, from the Inter Milan pack. It's fairly decent, super sub and fighting spirit, one touch pass and first time shot. I would definitely be playing him as an attack in CMF, not like Barella, but more like Bellingham. That's kind of where I would play him. But the rest of his stats are kind of limited. His acceleration, balance, and tight possession for carrying the ball forward are quite poor. Speed and stamina are okay at this position, um, but his passing isn't that great. So he's more kind of a run and gun. Defensively, he's very solid. He's going to have aggression in the 80s as well. So yeah, but that is it for the player of the week, lads. Let me know if you're disappointed with this pack. Uh, Rodri and Salah obviously are interesting. Under is good as well. But for the rest of this pack, I just feel like ugh, the player of the weeks, man, they really need to change them up. I know that they're trying to with the booster, but I think they need to go even one step further with it, to be honest with you. Um, I just feel like they definitely need to change things around a little bit, okay? So that is it for me, lads. I will talk to you guys in a little bit. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.